You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You, taking flight here in colorful Colorado. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for joining us and spending a few minutes of your very valuable time with us. We appreciate it. We do appreciate it. We've got an interesting question today revolving around public safety agencies, specifically smaller ones, and finding the right drone for them. When they're budget limited, what options do they have? What are they sacrificing when they give up price point with a drone? So we're going to be talking about that. Um, Today's podcast is brought to you by DroneU Membership. We've got brand new courses out just for you, DroneU members, $47 a month. It has not been inflation inflation adjusted yet. So make sure you pick up that membership because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, with over 40 classes to take, honestly, we give you everything that you need to start and run your business, scale your business, and use your drone for multiple revenue generating services from roof inspections to solar inspections to mapping, construction verticals, you name it, we got it. Go to thedroneu.com to become a member today and support the show. Hey guys, congrats on your move to Colorado. My question today is what's a good drone, startup drone, for a rural volunteer fire department? This is in northern New England and you have to deal with uh, cheap Yankees and also with uh, cold weather. Primary purposes would be search and rescue and wildfires as well as structure fires. As I said, most rural fire departments are pretty conservative with bucks, especially on new technologies. So I'm interested to see what you suggest. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate the question. Good question. And uh, I would imagine there are similar sized and even potentially larger rural and otherwise fire departments all over the country that would wonder the same thing. I, it brings to mind, Paul, the question of um, we certainly understand the budgetary restraints. I mean, I, you don't have to be a rural fire department to understand that for sure. Mm-hmm. But I, there's kind of, I would think, this point at which if you don't at least do X, it's probably not even worth your time. And money. I mean, I don't want to be. Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe that's not. Maybe a, a mini two no, would think, be worth. I think you doing have. I, I think you are right on the money, Rob. Because you, you know, you think of what Chris brought up in these um, needs for this drone, and he talked about search and rescue, which we've mm-hmm. done search and rescue with digital cameras, but most of the time it's done with thermal cameras. He talks about essentially alludes to hotspot detection with some of these fires that they want to be able to use this drone to get a better sense of what's going on. I mean, I think you hit the the nail on the head. Um, uh, also in regards to volunteer fire departments versus other city departments have budgetary constraints, you know, as well. Sure. Uh, which brings me up to an important point. Um, if you are watching this show, make sure to scroll down to the comment section. We'll have a link there to download our drone guide. This is actually specific to public safety. Uh, We've got a drone guide and it actually is fairly long. It's about 20 pages because it goes in depth about what each drone provides, the price point and what to expect out of it. That said, one of the last pages has a chart which breaks down which drones are thermal capable, which drones have zoom, which drones can do mapping. I mean, it's literally all there. On top of the very specific use cases that you might use said drone. So we do talk about very specific deliverables that you can expect to create with each one of those drones. So that will give you a really robust breakdown of the various drones that are available. So I do recommend um, downloading that and also an invitation anyone in public safety. If you want to check out the Props Academy program, which is all about training up your pilots for public safety missions, rec- I highly recommend recommend it. You can schedule a demo with me. You can email me directly, paul at thedroneu.com. And as a part of scheduling a demo with me, I will give you for free, I will ship you a public safety mini landing pad. So if that interests you, you want to find out more about the program, what greater incentive than a landing pad? Perfect for that drone right there. 
literally perfect for this drone. So he did mention a couple of things as to why I landed on a particular answer for him. He mentioned cold weather, right? Mm. What does that mean? That means self-heating batteries. So normally I would say, well, Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and Autel Evo 2 Dual could be great things for you, except the Autel Evo 2 Dual does not have self-heating batteries. So I kind of took that right out of the mix. Mm. Um, that said, you know, he talks about price point, but when he mentioned the need for thermal, Rob, that really kind of eliminates a lot of potential options for us because when it comes to thermal sensors, you're going to be paying for that thermal sensor. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap. So obviously got a couple of public safety powerhouses. You've got the M300. You've got the M30T. Uh, you also have the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance. We also know that DJI is supposed to release a new Enterprise drone by the end of the year, taking the Mavic 3 from a blunder into something quite useful. At least that's <laughs> what they say. What about non-DJI options? Non-DJI options. What a great question. Again, I mentioned the Autel Evo 2 Dual. Um, I think that that would be a great solution for him. Um, you know what? Let me take a step back because mm -hmm. I want to mention what I think will be the solution okay. and then mention alternatives and what they might be sacrificing for those alternatives. So based off the fact that you've mentioned thermal, based off the fact that you mentioned budget conscious, based on the fact that you've mentioned cold weather, I would recommend the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance, which we have here in front of me. This is a dual sensor drone, self-heating batteries, comes with a smart remote. Um, it's a great little setup. Also has attitude mode. You know how I feel about that one, Rob. <laughs> um, you also have three accessories that come with this particular drone, but let's talk about some of the other alternatives so you can gain a better perspective perspective and understanding as to why I'm mentioning this particular bird. Uh, so we already talked about Autel Evo 2 Dual. The price point is going to be a little bit higher than this Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advanced. In addition, uh, you won't have as much of a robust uh, transmission, video transmission. In addition, it kind of flies like an old Cadillac or a big Suburban, as I would like to rib Rob and PJ. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have self-heating batteries. So that would be his technical reason for maybe um, pumping the brakes on that option. M30T, right? Great zoom camera. It's a ridiculous amount of zoom. Also have a thermal drone. You're going to be paying about what what is it 10 or 11,000 for that bird now the thing is is that we have actually been trying to complete mapping missions with the h20t h20n you can get ortho mosaics out of it but the point cloud generation is kind of subpar um, that's where i actually think this drone does a better job than both of those drones when it comes to anything photogrammetry related um, that said, M30T, three grand more than this. For $7,000, you're getting the Flymore combo, so multiple batteries. You're getting that quad charger, all the accessories, the remote, etc. The M300, what an, a, another great option, but again, about double the price point of this, and you're going to lose the portability flexibility. Back mm -hmm. to Rob's question. What about non-DJI drones? Well, you've got the Skydio X two. There's the D and the E. I believe the E is for enterprise. Um, I have not seen the thermal camera on that drone. Can't speak to it, but it could be a potential um, alternative to this drone. You've got the Vantage Robotics Vesper, which is another uh, potential competitor. Um, I would say that that would probably be the closest thing that would compete with this particular aircraft. Both of those are going to be more as well, right? That is correct, yes. And then you have the Teal Drones Golden Eagle. Um, I haven't heard a lot of positive things about that bird, but that is another uh, alternative for him as well. Frankly speaking, I think when it comes to ease, convenience, thermal capability, dual screen, zoom, and photogrammetry for the price point, I think that your your best bet is going to be this particular uh, drone. Now, if you guys can't afford thermal for whatever reason. Um, I'll give you the recommendation that I literally gave to uh, Dave Ritchie just the, last week. Mm. Um, wow. Blast from the past. Yeah. He was looking for a drone to do inspections on billboards that are on building facades and on the road. Um, he was trying to keep the price uh, down significantly. I recommended the Mavic 2 Zoom to him because that Zoom sensor is going to allow him to kind of punch in and get better detail 
models. I said, look, if you've got a little bit more money, think of the Mavic 3. Uh, the zoom on that is really good. Also, the controllability of that zoom is much better than the Mavic 2 zoom. So, but 1700 bucks Mavic 2 zoom, great zoom camera, great drone, no thermal. So that would kind of be the wrap up. Now, if you download that drone guide, you're going to see a lot of other thermal based drones and you're going to see a, um, a true comparison between price points, capability, sensor size, zoom, all of that. So I would really recommend downloading that. If you are in public safety, you can go to propsflightschool.com, click on public safety, and you can also download that drone guide there. Uh, and again, if you want a free landing pad, you can book a demo with me to check out the props public safety program. Uh, it is the only education platform built for the drone industry to support numerous, numerous mission types and operations, but also pilots. So you can create those scalable systems to get your drone program up and running as soon as possible. Also, we've got a new webinar coming up for public safety if you want to check that out. But before I do any more promo stuff, Rob, I think that is essentially where we are at uh, as far as recommendations for him based off of the information that he gave us, which by the way, Chris, I really appreciate the context. Like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do with this bird. These are the features I'm looking for. So thank you very much for your question. Yeah. If you have one, askdroney.com.